It's Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers with tips and advice on landscaping and gardening. Here's Fernando Martinez. Yes, indeed. I am here, and thank you for tuning in here with me. Welcome. Welcome here to the patio here, Patio Side Chats. Today's topic I have for you, I've been thinking about this all week. I've been kind of wanting to talk about the sounds outside because I know there's a lot of um, visual things in landscaping, and and a lot of it is focused on that, but there's some other uh, senses that we have, obviously, and... uh, the warmth, you know, of a fire pit. I like the sound of the trickling water, you know, of the water feature. But if you're out working in the garden, if you're reading, you know, a nice book on the patio, relaxing, maybe in the shade under a tree, or if you're out there barbecuing and or having a party, you know, whatever it is, um, these activities that we do out in our yards, I was thinking really about how, what sound, how could we get music, you know, involved? And outdoor speakers are huge. I mean, it's a really big part of the atmosphere, and music is, is special, something that's near and dear to my heart. I'm a musician. I love playing music, listening to music. I have a lot of respect for people who can put music together and engineering and production and performances and, you know, just so we can you know, walk around or just drive our cars listening to the radios or, you know, CDs or MP3s, whatever they're into, even vinyl records, <laughs> they still exist and actually have gotten more and more popular here lately. But so today's topic is going to be all about outdoor speakers. There's a lot to think about. There's a lot of different ways to set them up. Uh, what's the difference between indoor speakers, outdoor speakers? Uh, how do you mount them? In the eaves of the home, as the amount of them out in the garden, how many speakers do you need? What's the price going to be of these things? You know, what size are they? Do I need a subwoofer? Are you going to be doing Bluetooth, iPod, MP3s? You know, what type of amp do I need? There's a lot of things to think about, and I wanted to go through it kind of in detail to help you out with your music introduction into the outside realm there and enjoying that. So let's dive right on into the show here. Now there's several types of speakers that are available, but um, the main thing is you got to make sure they're rated for outside. I mean, that's first and foremost. Indoor speakers do not work outside. They're completely different uh, mentality, different way of thinking different sounds are coming out of these speakers because an indoor speaker is expecting you to be inside and the way they produce sound and bass and, you know, mids and trebles and all this, it's all geared towards indoors. When you go outside, it's wide open space. Speakers sound completely different outside than they do inside. Secondly, and probably more importantly, would be the construction of the speaker needs to be completely bulletproof. It's got to be ready to take on all the elements, you know, you've got sun and wind and rain, snow, depending on where you are. And the speakers have to be able to stand up to that. So I think that's probably the first thing you should look at is the quality of the speaker and how it's constructed. And it should really be just out of really hard, you know, strong materials. And there should be seals and things where, you know, it it makes sense that it's an outdoor type speaker. So check that out before you purchase any and think about when it comes to quantity of speakers, there's so many different kits and things that you can buy. Um, You can get away with as little as two speakers. I mean, most of our systems are all set up with is with a, some sort of stereo version, meaning you need a left and a right channel. So two speakers would be the minimum, in my opinion, um, unless you somehow have all in one, you know, piece, but they'll have multiple speakers in there that will be stereo anyway. But the individual speakers left and right, I mean, make make a lot of sense. I've seen systems up to eight speakers with a subwoofer. I think that's that's a really good one. Um, and you can get anywhere in between, you know. So let's um, talk about why you would want to do uh, more than two speakers and how you would set up that stereo sound and what it's going to sound like. So 
if you have two speakers and you have a big yard, it's kind of hard to get the sound evenly all the way around the yard. You're going to end up spreading them out way too far from each other. If you have a small space, maybe a condo, tiny little, you know, back space, uh, two speakers might be enough. And where you mount them makes a huge difference too. So if you have a large area, more speakers is better. You know, you want to space them out. I don't know, 10, 15 feet apart from each other if you can and, and kind of evenly going around the space. If you have an L-shaped yard, maybe you've got one section and you want to get some sound over there on that side, you know, we have to consider how that's going to sound and what, what you send over there and what speakers you do. And if you're going to want any kind of low end, I mean, it's such a broad subject, you know. I mean, we could just go on and on about any different ways of how to set up a, a speaker system, but... I, I love sound. I am an audiophile to the core. I love hearing all the frequencies, high frequencies, mid frequencies, low frequencies, and, and a good, nice, you know, and it doesn't, re- it kind of doesn't really matter what style of music you're listening to. I mean, it does to a certain degree, I guess, if you were into some R&B or some heavy low end with a lot of bass, um, you know, you're going to need a lot of power and you're going to need a sub or maybe multiple subs. But for the, for the most part, you, even if you're listening to piano music, you know, as the piano is going up higher in the scales, there's going to be more trebles and, you know, mids as they go to the down towards the lower notes. You're going to want to hear some bass. Even out of a piano, you need to hear some low end. Now the cheap speakers and you know, small speakers, or you see them in the rocks, and um, you know, if they if they're really tiny and they're cheap, they're probably going to get just a lot of high end and a lot of uh, treble. You know, so they both sound kind of tinny. You'll be able to hear the music, but you're not the mid range and the lower end is much harder to produce, and it takes a, a a bigger speaker, it takes a little bit more power, and it takes you know a good decent speaker that's put together to reproduce the sounds that are there you know also it's probably um, I should mention that it matters what you're listening to as to how the system's going to sound because sound can be elusive and it's kind of hard to track and find out well what's what's making it sound a certain way is it the speakers is it the space it might are the speakers you know imagine yourself out in the backyard and I face the speakers away from you What's that going to sound like? Or I face them towards you, you're going to hear a great big difference. And it's not necessarily the speaker, it's the space. It's where you are in relation to where the speaker is and how it sounds. But what we're after is a good, high-quality sound that will reproduce as much of the frequencies across the spectrum as possible so that you can get a decent, um, you know, music playing and you have a decent sound, a good quality sound. So again, the highs are really easily reproduced by small speakers, but you end up having it sound really tinny. So if you can invest a little bit more money in a little bit either bigger of a speaker or some of the speakers have uh, dual cones, we'll have a mid-range and a tweeter. And then if you can get a system with a sub, I recommend it for sure. Because then you can, and you don't have to turn the sub up very loud. It's just that you want some of that low end and that bass there, which is, hard to produce and and it's hard to have it reflect off of things when you have a big wide open space. So you might have to turn the bass up a little bit more than you think just to get uh, the right amount of bass coming out. And bass is one of those uh, tones that travels, you know, we've all heard the cars, you know, with the bass booming, the bass, that signal travels out a lot, but it needs to bounce off of something to, for you to be able to hear it. So that's, you know, we don't want to turn the bass up too loud. We want it to be you know, and the music itself should be, in my opinion, you know, if you're out in the in the garden and relaxing or, you know, well, I guess if you were having throwing a party or whatever, you might want some rock and roll or, you know, get a decent sound and have a system that you can turn up a little bit if you need to. And we're going to talk about amps here in a second. And, but mostly, you know, if you're there or it's just you and the family, it can be down low and kind of the backdrop and drown out you know, any traffic noise or dogs barking or, you know, whatever it is that, that kind of takes us out of our realm of relaxation. 
you know, nice soft uh, music or just, you know, even some blues or whatever it is that if that you're into that can just be kind of mellow in there can really change the atmosphere a lot. Music, it does something when you, you turn it on, it just puts your brain in a different space and helps you get in a good mood and just feel good about the yard. So whatever you do, even if it is the cheaper speakers, um, you know, turn them down or try to turn the treble down on the, the amp or whatever it is. So let's talk about amps. Um, some speakers can be powered. So if you buy uh, powered speakers, they're going to be heavier. They're going to cost a little bit more, but the amp is going to be built in to the speaker itself. And then you can put them throughout and then they're, they're already amplified. The, what I would probably recommend is not buying amplified speakers, get a better speaker. They'll cost less than the amplified speaker because you're not putting amps in every speaker and they're lighter and you can space them around throughout the yard and you wire them back to a single amp that the amp will produce the sound for those speakers. And here's the thing. If you buy really nice, high end, expensive speakers, don't go low end on the amplifier because whatever is the weakest link is going to really limit what, how good the system can sound. So if you have a not that good sounding amp, you can have the best speakers in the world, it's still not going to sound very good. So get a decent amp, decent speakers to whatever budget you know you can afford. And you don't have to go crazy over the top. There's some decent mid-level speakers that you might hear a slight difference between a mid-level speaker and a really high-end speaker. But if you go really go down and let's say there's some speakers I was looking online earlier and there was like 75 bucks, you know, for a couple speakers, or you can go up to two to $3,000 for, you know, a, a outdoor speaker system. Um, but somewhere in the middle there, you're going to find a decent, you know, amount of speakers uh, appropriate for your space and you know a sub and whatever if you wanted one or if you can get some low end coming out of a smaller speaker that's great and you know in this case normally i would say like brand names don't really mean a whole lot on a lot of products but you know if it is a bose they sound really good they make good products so you can you can feel pretty safe you're going to get a decent sound out of that or clips they have uh, really good sounding speakers and, you know, um, one that I like is called Sonoscapes. They have um, four speaker kits, eight speaker kits with the sub. And so, you know, you can kind of go by that, but you should listen to them if you can. If there's any way you can hear the system before you buy it, highly, highly recommend it. And again, pick a good song that's been engineered well, that sounds really good, good performances, has been produced well. Because that's what makes a difference too. You could have the the best amp, and you could have the greatest speakers, and then you play a you know some music into it that wasn't recorded very well, or you know wasn't engineered or produced very well. It's not um, it's not going to translate into good good sound. So pick something that you know sounds really good. I mean, some things off the top of my head would be like a Steely Dan, or the Eagles, you know, Dire Straits, or Somebody that you know has really like, oh my gosh, no matter what you listen to it on, the tones and the sound of that record sounds really good. Use that for your reference so that you, and if especially if it's a song you really know, maybe it's an old Phil Collins song or something, it's like, I, I really know that song sounds, sounds really good on my system. When you go to hear the speakers, ask for that song or usually they can pull it up. Don't use, um, you know, songs off of YouTube or really low quality MP3s to test your system. You want to get a good, you know, solid um, song that you know sounds good and you want to test it with that. Now let's talk about placement of speakers and the wiring of the system. So you go out, you get yourself a nice uh, speaker system and, and you could already have an amp in your house with your surround sound, with your TV or whatever. And if you have a multi-channel amp, you can certainly use the existing amp and put it on channel B or channel C and, and you can just route that out to the speakers and use that from inside the house. Because, you know, if you already have maybe uh, your TV, you know, whatever the cable service is, 
where you have the radio music channels, you can just use that. Or if you have a Bluetooth on that and you want to hook up your phone or your iPod or whatever it is, there it is. You can use that and that sound will go outside. You won't even have to buy another amp. So, But when you get the speakers there and you take them out of the box and you're ready to install them, we have to think about where they're going to go, where is the listening area going to be, and it's going to be multiple listening areas. And you have to kind of um, space them around, and we have to think about that stereo left and right, like we were talking about. So to me, kind of the the worst ones that I've heard is where they just have a big space, they buy two speakers, they're outdoor, and they go up in the eaves of the home, and they kind of space them out far apart from each other. So if you're standing by one speaker, you can hear it really loud, and it's hard to have a conversation with somebody, then you move over, you know, five, six feet and the sound really drops off and you can still kind of hear it, but the sound quality goes away really fast. And especially if it's a lot of high frequencies coming out of there, it can almost be annoying if you're standing right in front of it and then almost really can't hear it or enjoy it if you're not near it. And you have a lot of the right side and then you walk over to the other side of the yard and you listen to that speaker, you're getting all the left channel. You're not really hearing any of the right side. So you don't, you kind of lose that stereo image, and in my experience, they don't project really well, and ha- and it doesn't really come off, you know, like it sounds really good. Another thing is don't, you know, turn your house speakers on on the inside of the house and crank it up super loud and think you're going to go outside in the backyard and it's going to sound good. It just doesn't. You're, you're going to get all, a lot of just the muddy, low end you're going to, a lot of the highs aren't, aren't going to travel very far. They're going to be inside the house and, it's, and whoever's in the house is going to think it's too loud. So we definitely have to have a separate system for outside, but let's say you have at least four speakers. You can space them first in the corners and then walk around where you think you're going to be listening to it the most, either hanging out by the barbecue or a fire pit or lounge chairs or whatever it is. And get the corners and kind of aim them back towards the house. It really, to, in my mind, it's the speakers are out away out at the fences and facing back towards the house. And and the, a lot of these outdoor speakers are directional, so they're not bothering the neighbors. You're they're focal, almost like a light would be focused on an area. And you take that and you kind of aim that speaker back towards the house. And, and give it some distance and some air so it can spread out and kind of fill in. And then go, you know, just if it's, you know, 50 feet across the back, just, you know, divide it by four. Let's say it's 40 feet and you go every 10 feet across the back. You got four speakers and, you know, evenly spread and then back towards the house. Kind of hard to get a visual, visual on the radio, I know, but we'll try our best here. Then the sub, if you do have a sub, should go right in the middle and um, really be I kind of uh, central located. And the, a lot of the systems, will, those speakers will wire back to those subs, and then the sub will just have two wires going back to your stereo or to your amp, wherever it is. So if you're putting in a patio, uh, think about if you're going to run outdoor speakers, whether it's pavers or concrete or whatever, and run a sleeve somewhere to where you can get a wire inside to the back of your wherever your entertainment center is in your house and run the wire in there so you can hook up to that amp if that's what you're going to do or if you're going to have one in the garage a separate amp for the outdoor system certainly not a bad idea it gives you separate control of what you can do outside from inside but again yeah i don't know what you're going to be doing out there and using it for um you know you could be uh using it for sporting events i've um definitely seen that where the game's on people are all over there having a good time, partying, maybe they're barbecuing, somebody wants to go outside, relax, they still want to hear the game, you can have that TV uh, sound running through the speakers and you can hear the game out in the yard. So it's kind of cool. There's there's really a lot you can do with it. You can get soft, you know, mellow music or maybe you're sunbathing in the back and you, you want to hear your favorite song on there or maybe it's the evening sitting down by the fire. You could even put in sounds of nature, whatever, you know, they've got a lot of um, option these days for what you can play. So I want to continue talking about outdoor speakers and that elusive sound, how to get the really good, decent 
sound. You can listen to your jams out in your backyard. So we'll be uh, right back. You're listening to Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers on California's Central Coast. Here on 1240 AM and 99.5 FM, KSMA. Chaparral Pavers. I love to come home.com. Imagine the flickering flames and warmth of a fire pit, soothing sounds of trickling water, decorative lighting, highlighting your landscape at dusk, driveways and patios, not only functional, but a work of art. This is what Chaparral Pavers does for your landscape lifestyle. You'll love to come home. Chaparral Pavers. Visit us now at ilovetocomehome.com. If you're thinking about installing a new paver patio or paver driveway, check out Chaparral Pavers online at ilovetocomehome.com. Serving the Central Coast since 2001, Chaparral Pavers will work with you to get it right and complete the job to your specifications as customer service is king at Chaparral Pavers. Paver driveways are stylish and durable and guaranteed to never crack. If your old concrete driveway or entryway is a hazardous cracking mess, it's time to call Chaparral Pavers. Go to their website, ilovetocomehome.com. You'll find all the information you need. Check out photographs of past installations and reviews from Central Coast residents who have used Chaparral Pavers. And don't forget, all installations are guaranteed for the life of your home. So check out Chaparral Pavers online at ilovetocomehome.com. Chaparral Pavers, they'll make you love to come home. Now, back to Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers on KSMA. And we are back. Okay, we are talking about outdoor speakers, getting your jams going out there, getting some nice ambiance, and whether you're working out in the garden or reading a book on the patio, relaxing, barbecuing, throwing a party, maybe just sitting by the fire pit and you want to hear your favorite song or some nice relaxing music. I'm picturing some saxophone, maybe some nice piano work or, you know, I just, uh, there's so much music that I love. I'm a music enthusiast. I absolutely love it. I've been a musician for a long time. Uh, I just, I've been getting into my vinyl collection with tube amps and to me, it's all about tone. I love tone. I love really good produced, well-engineered, great performances. When all that comes together on a song, the genre really doesn't mean that much to me as good, solid tones, good performances, and, and great sound. It just translates across any genre and, and across any system, too. And sound can be elusive. It's it's one of those things that's difficult to put your finger on. When you say something sounds good, that sounds good. It's it's difficult to say what what is it, what sounds good. The speaker, the cone, the magnet, the housing, you know, the room, the space. Is it the amplifier? Was it that guitar that the musician was playing? Was it the microphone that was used? It was recording. There's a lot of things going on. And one thing I want to say is. The more attention you pay to detail as you're setting up your system, the better the system's going to sound in the end. So even if it seems like these small little things, like, you know, the amp, like we were talking about, maybe you just upgrade slightly on the amp or your the speakers are just, you know, slightly better than some other speakers or the wire that you choose, which I, I did want to talk about too, the, that makes a difference. Just a little tiny difference. Speaker's a tiny little difference. The space makes a tiny little difference. But when you add all those tiny little differences up when you're finished, it makes a big difference. And it can really be the difference between that system sounding really good and sounding okay. And, you know, it, we can all do things where it's okay, but that's really not what this show is about or even what I do. It's I love to come home. I want you to, to love it. And when, when something sounds really good and touches your soul, to me, that's worth doing. That's worth spending the time and effort to get it dialed in and get it right. I want vinyl coming out of my speakers <laughs> with a nice tube amp. And I want it to be, you know, nice, high quality um, sound, you know. So convenience, I get it, you know, with MP3s. 
you are losing quality, but they've gotten better. MP3s have gone, come a long way, and it, even with the Apple, with their sound and the format that they have, um, it's it's much better than it used to be, and, and it's pretty decent quality. YouTube, I don't know if you're listening to songs on there, how it's going to sound on any system, but again, it's elusive. Now, let's talk about wiring. The When you're using wiring outside to the speakers and going back, you know, you can't use regular speaker wire like you would on the inside of the house. It's not rated for outside. And if you want to do, you know, you can get really kind of crazy on it, but at least it should be copper wire and the wire should be decent thickness. I use the same wire that we use for our landscape lighting. I would say a 12 gauge would make sense, especially if you're running multiple speakers and you're hooking up a sub or something like that and a decent amount of power going out there because you're going to lose less signal. The thinner the wire is, the longer the run it is, you're going to get, you're getting resistance all the way down that wire and you're losing signal. So it's not coming in as strong to the speakers. You might have to turn it up, the volume a little bit louder. Um, and that's the same with underpowered amps. If the amp doesn't have enough power to power the speakers, you end up turning it up really loud. But it's, I mean, as far as the volume goes, but it's not really that loud. And you hear a lot of hiss. So I don't know if I said that right. But if a low-powered amp, you turn it up high to get it a decent volume, and it doesn't sound good because there's it's the amp is overworking. An overpowered amp, you turn it up to one or two, and it's re, and it's decent volume already. It's going to sound much better, and it's going to sound quieter and cleaner. The, the thicker the cable is, so the, the wires, when you run them out, they're 12 gauges, kind of a thick wire. I don't know if you know what that, you know, these gauges can be elusive because the higher the number is on gauges, 14 gauge, 18 gauge, 20 gauge, as you're going up, the wire is getting thinner. And as the numbers get lower, 10 gauge is thicker than 12 gauge. You can, you want a decent size of wire going out there. So you, again, small little details, but they end up making... A big difference so okay that's all the time we have for today i could go on and on about sound i absolutely love it check us out on facebook if um you miss any of these shows at chaparral pavers um you can go to youtube channel and you can hear this show and all our past shows so thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next week This has been Patio Side Chats with Fernando Martinez from Chaparral Pavers. Go to ilovetocomehome.com to find out more or call 805-588-6917. And be sure and tune in next week at this same time for Patio Side Chats here on KSMA.